dear students in the last video i discussed about some of the spotters related to the osteology of head and neck so uh, we'll see some other questions in today's session the first question is identify the given bone and the circled region write the clinical significance of the circled region so the given bone is occipital bone and the circled region you are seeing the internal surface of the occipital bone so you can say it is the internal occipital protuberance so that is a region that is corresponding to the external occipital protuberance on the external surface now write the clinical significance of the circled region so you know that it is a area where many sinuses join that is you can see here in the sagittal sulcus above the superior sagittal sinus is lodged whereas the superior sagittal sinus is uh, continuous as the transverse sinus which passes through the the transverse groove on the right side and uh, on the left side you can see the left transverse groove where uh, you can see the left transverse sinus and on the lower part you can see one uh, groove that is reaching up to the foramen magnum and that groove uh, lodges the occipital sinus so in between that at the region where the uh, false cerebri meets the tentorium cerebelli you get a sinus that is known as the straight sinus so this region is a region where the superior sagittal sinus continues as the right transverse sinus and the straight sinus continues as the left transverse sinus and you can also say that the occipital sinus drains into this a group so this group is known as a confluence of sinuses or torcula herophili the next question is identify the given bone and give any three nerves related to this bone mentioning the sites so the given bone is mandible i have done a detailed session on the mandible now the question asked here is the three nerves actually we have we have got seven nerves related to this mandible so we'll see those nerves with the sides so the first one you can say there is mental nerve that is passing through the mental foramen then uh, on the posterior aspect itself you can say uh, the marginal mandibular nerve that is just behind the posterior behind the oblique line that you can see in the front then you can say about the inferior alveolar nerve that is passing through the mandibular foramen and then to the uh, through the mandibular canal which is present on the internal surface of the ramus of mandible then you have the mylohyoid nerve that is passing through the mylohyoid groove then you are having the uh, lingual nerve that is related to the upper border or upper alveolar border of the uh, body of mandible and you have the auricular temporal nerve that is passing through the medial aspect of the condylar process and you have mesenteric nerve that is passing through the mandibular nerve so these are the seven nerves uh, so the question asked here is the nerves with the sides so you have to mention the sides also the next question is identify the given bone and the pointed region uh, marked with the yellow arrow so the given bone is sphenoid bone and the marked region is spine of sphenoid so this is a frequently asked question spine of sphenoid is a frequently asked question name any two structures attached to the point region so actually there are basically three ligaments and two muscles uh, attached to this we will see that the two muscles attached to the spinosphenoid are tensor tympani and tensor velli palatini and the three ligaments attached are spinomandibular ligament anterior ligament of malleus and pterygo spinous ligament spinomandibular ligament i have discussed it in mandible uh, the other end is attached to the lingula lingula is present uh, on the internal surface of the ramus of mandible so it is present like a tongue like uh, covering or hood over the mandibular foramen and the anterior ligament of malleus is definitely attached to the malleus which is an ear ossicle then you have the pterygospinous ligament that is attached to the lateral pterygoid plate 
So these are the three ligaments uh, related to the spinospinalt. Now there are some structures related to the uh, spinospinalt. So if the question asked is what are the attachments on the spinospinalt? You have to mention about the muscles and ligaments attached. But if the question asked is what are the structures related to the spinospinalt? You have to mention these structures. So, so these are laterally it is related to the auricular temporal nerve. Laterally you have the auricular temporal nerve and medially you have the cordate tympanic nerve and the auditory tube. So what is the significance of having uh, these nerves or this region? The auricular temporal nerve provides a secretor motor supply to the parotid gland, whereas the cordate tympanic nerve provides a secretor motor supply to the uh, submandibular and sublingual gland. So, secretor motor supply means these are helpful in the secretion of the saliva. And also, the cordate tympanic nerve has another function, so it provides the taste sensation over the anterior two thirds of the tongue. The taste sensation is uh, by the cordate tympanic nerve over the anterior two thirds of tongue. So, in conditions like necrosis or fracture of the spinospinal, what will happen? Definitely, these nerves will get damaged. So, the secretor motor supply to all the three salivary glands, that is the parotid, submandibular, sub, uh, sublingual, all the three glands will be lost. Therefore, there will be decreased salivary secretion from these three glands as well as there will be loss of taste sensation from the anterior two-third of the tongue because of the involvement of the cordate tympanic nerve. So, this that is a uh, clinical significance related to the uh, spinospinoid. The next question is identify the area pointed with blue arrow and in the structure lodged in it. It is a direct question actually. So the area pointed is you can say it is in particular you can say it is a hypophyseal fossa that belongs to the cella torsica. The cella torsica the name uh, is referred to a Turkish saddle. Uh, you can see the cella torsica is present over the median or the central area of the middle cranial fossa that we have discussed earlier. Cella torsica is having three parts that is an elevation that is known as the tuberculum cellae, a depression that is known as the hypophyseal fossa and an elevation again that is known as the dorsum cellae. So uh, as the name suggests the hypophyseal fossa lodges the hypophysis cerebri or the pituitary gland. So the answer here is the pituitary gland. The next question is identify the area marked with the red circle. Name the bonds forming it and write one clinical significance. So, uh, this is also a favorite question that is usually asked. This region is referred to as Tyrion. So, Tyrion is formed by basically uh, four bonds. You can see this is forming an H shaped suture, and that H shape is formed by four bonds. So, these bonds are the anterior inferior angle of the parietal bone the squamous part of the temporal bone, the frontal bone and the greater wing of sphenoid bone. So these bones form the H-shaped suture and that region is known as Tyrion. So what is the clinical significance of this region? So beneath the Tyrion which all structures you get, you get the anterior branch of middle meningeal vessels and the stem of lateral sulcus of brain just beneath the terion. So that is uh, the importance of the terion. The bone over this region is actually very thin. So uh, this region can undergo uh, severe bleeding or even a small blow or a fracture at this region can injure the middle meningeal vessels that are, that are underneath this and can give rise to the extradural uh, hematoma or the extradural bleeding. And uh, this region is used for burr hole surgeries in uh, neurosurgery where you drill this region and uh, you perform the craniotomy or other surgeries. And also uh, if there is any, any extradural bleeding through this region, the blood is evacuated. And uh, sometimes one more question can be asked related to this. What is the surface marking of this region? Actually, the central point of Tyrion is situated 4 cm above the zygomatic arch and 3.5 cm behind the, behind the uh, frontal zygomatic suture. So it is 4 cm above the zygomatic arch 
and 3.5 cm behind the frontosigmatic suture and this point is known as the sylvian point so sometimes that question can also be asked along with this tyrion i hope the session was useful for you if you have any doubts you can ask me or uh, if you have any suggestions you can please comment in the comment box uh, so i'll be coming up with uh, more questions in the coming days thank you